On behalf of Ashdell Secondary College, I would like to welcome you to our Anzac Day ceremony. I would like to introduce Deputy Principals Ms. James and Ms. Doyle to deliver the acknowledgement of country. Ashdale Secondary College, Nungabuja, Wajapuja. Nalak, Kadij, Nidiga, Ubudia, Australia, Buja. And the connection to Sorry, and the connection to Buja, Kerb, and Mort. Nalok, pay no long respect to the Noongar people and the Katajin, we Buria, we Kora Kora, we Yayi, we Mila. Ashdale Secondary College is situated on Wajak land. We acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and community. We pay our respects to the Noongar people and their cultures and to elders past, present and emerging. Good morning, students, staff, and distinguished guests. It is with great pleasure that I address you this morning at a very different looking ANZAC service to the usual ones you may have experienced here at Ashdale Secondary College in the past. At Ashdale Secondary College, the ANZAC Day service is one of the most significant events on the calendar. Significant because it is time when we remember the landing of the Australian and New Zealand troops at ANZAC Cove just before dawn in Gallipoli on the 25th of April, 1915. We acknowledge and honour the courage and sacrifice of those that served and those that lost their lives, some as young as you, the students listening in today. We also acknowledge the fallen from many other countries, including India, represented by one of our special guests today. This year also marks 75 years that Australia has been involved in peacekeeping operations all over the world, including areas as remote as the Western Sahara and the Congo. The activities of peacekeepers have included clearing landmines, facilitating the delivery of humanitarian aid, and assisting at the point of need in war-torn communities. Whilst relatively few Australians have lost their lives on peacekeeping operations, this is not a measure of the risk that they face, but a testament to their skill and professionalism, and today we honour them. Recognising Anzac Day is an important part of the Ashdale Secondary College tradition, and the day is now more and more recognised by the wider community. With many Australians remembering those who demonstrated great courage in the service of their country and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. The Australians at Gallipoli came from all sorts of backgrounds, but they shared the terrible experience of war. Ever since then, for more than a hundred years, the men and women in our Navy, Army and Air Force have honoured the memory of our original Anzacs. I remember my early Anzac services at primary school and stories such as Simpson and his donkey. As I grew older, I came to understand these stories in greater depth, particularly now with my own son, a member of the Royal Australian Air Force, and who recently was on the ground in Kabul, Afghanistan, helping to evacuate civilians under chaotic and life threatening conditions. So today we recognise more than 100,000 Australian service men and women who have lost their lives in military operations carried out in our country's name. We honour the values that have been invested in the original ANZAC, loyalty, selflessness and courage, and the ways in which later generations have measured their own achievements against those of the soldiers who fought on the Lily. Thank you. I now invite College Captain Natalie Dayo to read Psalm 23. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass and leads me beside the quiet streams. He restores my failing health. He helps me do what honours him the most. Even walking through the dark valley of death, 
I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Guiding, guiding, all the way. You provide delicious food for me in the presence of my enemies. You have welcomed me as your guest. Blessings overflow. Your goodness and unfailing kindness shall be with me all my life. And afterwards, I will live with you forever in your home. I invite College Captain Willie and Linter to read Indigenous Anzac. They have forgotten him, need him no more. He who fought for his land in nearly every war. Tribal fights before his country was taken by Captain Cook, then went overseas to fight at Gallipoli and Tobruk. World War One. two indigenous Anzacs were there France, Europe's desert, New Guinea's jungles did his share. Korea, Malaya, Vietnam. Again, indigenous soldier enlisted. Fight for democracy was his duty. He enlisted. Back home went his own way not looking for praise. Like when he was a warrior in his forgotten days. Down on the Gold Coast, a monument in the Bora Ring. Recognition at last, his praises they are starting to sing. This indigenous soldier who never marches on Anzac Day, living in his gunya, doesn't have much to say thinks of his friends who fought, some returned, some died. If only one day they could march together side by side. His medals he keeps, hidden away from prying eyes. No one knows, no one sees the tears in his old indigenous eyes. He's been outcast just left by himself to die. Recognition at last, Indigenous Anzac, hold your head high. Every year at the Gold Coast Yuga Bear Bora Ring site, Indigenous Anzac in uniform and medals, a magnificent sight. The rock with Aboriginal tribal totems, painting inset, the Kuba Mary people's inscription of lest we forget. I invite Yash Vicaria to read the Anzac dedication. They have not died. They have not died in vain. Those men we know, in desert sands or on the Buna track, they have not died at all, but live anew in memories of Blue and Tom and Jack, in Syrian hills and Wadi's in Trabuk. Men lived and laughed and sometimes were profane. And all around the brown earth heaved and shook, and some who laughed will never laugh again. They only died in vain. If we who live, when war's last shot is fired and last blood shed, refuse to give all living men can give to build the new world 
for which they bled. Thank you, Yash. I invite Brigadier Philip White, AM, RFD, to deliver the ANZAC, andre ANZAC address. Thanks very much for the introduction. Ms. Bogonovich, Principal of Ashdale Secondary College, staff, students, family and friends. It's always a great honour to address an ANZAC assembly, the more so for me at Ashdale, the school where my wife, Mrs. Carol Strauss, was the foundation principal and where I have so many friends. Could I also congratulate Ashdale on having the courage to conduct a formal ANZAC ceremony under the trying conditions and times in which we find ourselves. 2022 marks the 107th anniversary of the heroic but ill-fated landing of Gallipoli on the 25th of April 1915, when a huge flotilla of ships and over half a million soldiers and sailors from Britain, France, India, Australia and New Zealand launched a bold seaborne assault on the narrow Gallipoli Peninsula that separated the Aegean Sea from the Dardanelles and the Turkish capital of Constantinople. You know, At about 30 p.m. on the 25th of April 1915, around one and a half thousand soldiers from the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, or ANZAC for short, stormed ashore. One of the north of the assault force were 200 soldiers from the West Australian 11th Battalion, who, as the northernmost group, immediately came under accurate rifle and machine gun fire. As the sun rose on the narrow stretch of beach, soon to become known as Anzac Cove, the men realised something was wrong. Not only were they completely disorganised with units hopelessly intermingled, but they were also confronted by a very steep, almost impenetrable lands landscape of scrubby cliffs and steep gullies, and a Turkish opposition who did not flee in terror, but fell back in good order and pre to prepared positions from which they launched relentless, well-coordinated and fearless counter-attacks. So bad was the position of the 16,000 Australian and New Zealand soldiers at the end of this first Anzac Day that their commanders requested an immediate evacuation. The Royal Navy said that this was impossible and the men were told their only hope was to dig, dig, dig. And so it was for the next eight months until their final evacuation on the 21st of December 1915, with the loss of 8,708 Australians, 2,721 New Zealanders, and the Allies, including the 31,000 or so Anzacs, tried repeatedly to break out from their tenuous toehold on the Gallipoli Peninsula and to seize the high ground. History tells us they did not succeed but their bravery under such atrocious conditions became the stuff of legend. So what then gathered here as we are today in the peaceful and safe surroundings of Ashdale Secondary College does the landing at Anzac Cove on the 25th of April 1915 and the subsequent ill-fated fighting under such appalling conditions tell us about the Anzac spirit. The Anzac spirit has come to mean many things to different people. But from a national perspective, I think the enduring characteristics of courage, initiative, mateship, teamwork, resilience and self-sacrifice can be readily identified. These are traits that Australians have over succeeding years come to see as defining us as a nation. And indeed, they are reflected in the Ashdale College values of respect for self and others, cooperation and teamwork to achieve goals and independence by showing initiative, resilience and adaptability. So it's important on this day of national remembrance that we do indeed honour the origins. So on this Anzac Day in 2022, we come together as a school community on this special occasion, not in celebration, but rather in memory of the almost 100,000 Australian men and women who have made the supreme sacrifice in defence of our nation at Gallipoli, or on the Western Front, or in the Middle East during World War I, or again in World War II, 
or then Korea or Malaya or Vietnam or Somalia or Rwanda or Iraq or Afghanistan or on a thousand other battlefields where Australian men and women have fought and died. I invite you to join with me on this 107th anniversary of the landing at Gallipoli on the 25th of April 1915 to reflect on our soldiers past and present who gave up their lives and still do for our way of life, lest we forget. We will now commence the wreath lane. I would now like to invite Andrew Wright to deliver the ode. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end, against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget.
I invite Rhea Mandalia to read the Anzac Day Tribute. With their hair a little lighter, their step not quite so sure, still they march on proudly as they did the year before. There's their hands that saved us, their courage showed the way, their lives they laid down for us that we may live today. From Gallipoli's rugged hillsides to the sands of Alamein. On rolling seas and in the skies, those memories will remain of airmen and the sailors, of Lone Pine and Sivla Bay. The boys of the Dardanelles are remembered on this day. They fought their way through jungles their blood soaked desert sands. They still remember their comrades who rest in foreign lands. They remember the siege of Old Tobruk, their mud of the Kokoda Trail. Some paying the supreme sacrifice with courage that did not fail. To the icy land of Korea, the steamy jungles of Vietnam, and the heroic battle of Cap Young and that epic victory at Longton. Fathers, sons and brothers, together they fought and died. That we may live in peace together, while at home their mothers cried. When that final bugle calls them to cross that great divide, those comrades will be waiting when they reach the other side. I would now like to call jo Geordie Hall to come and sing the national anthem and, and ask for you all to please stand. That concludes our Anzac Day ceremony for this morning. Thank you for attending. Please stay and mentor until further instruction. <laughs>